Good morning, everyone, <laughs> and thank you, Diana. Diana's a little hidden behind her uh, uh, music there, but see, she has a face. <laughs> thank you, Diana, for joining us today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living. 
I'm Reverend Suzanne Grace Raleigh, minister, chaplain, and spiritual practitioner here at this Foothill Center for Spiritual Living. We are a part of a, a larger global organization known as the Centers for Spiritual Living. And we're grateful to meet every Sunday here to celebrate, to contemplate, and to cooperate with this thing called life. And I'm so happy that you're here today joining in for this virtual reality. Thank goodness that we have this, that we can stay connected. Because even though we're not in the sanctuary together, you're, you and me and all of us are in the sanctuary of our hearts. So we are together. It's just in a different way for now. So I welcome you to our celebration service today. And this hour is a wonderful time to, to go within, to be inspired by Diana's music, by prayerful time, by meditation, by my message, and just being in the atmosphere of the divine, of you, of me, of all of us coming together to celebrate this day. And again, I'm grateful for this virtual experience because people from all over the globe are watching this either right now or later. I want to put out a little personal shout out hello to my family and friends that I know are tuning in from Asia, Hawaii, New York, Seattle, Colorado, Utah. I have family everywhere. So hi, everybody. So glad you're here. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. The Foothill Center for Spiritual Living is a, is a warm, loving place to be, to grow consciously, spiritually, and from the heart. So I welcome you all today. I also want to, before we start, I want to honor Reverend Maggie, who is our spiritual leader here. And she's away this weekend because it's her birthday. So happy birthday, Reverend Maggie. We all send you that big love for your birthday celebration this weekend. We'll begin our service today with song. So if you're able, let's stand up and Diana will lead us in a song. All right, we're gonna start with, start my day with love, so yes. I'm yeah. <laughs> I start my day with joy. I start my day with love. 
that's really what my song or my uh, talk is about today, my message. So we can all go home now. No. <laughs> but it's a great, great idea that what are you starting your day with, right? So <laughs> we're starting it in this sanctuary together. So I'm going to invite um, our practitioner uh, of the day, Peter Rolita, to lead us in our vision and value statement and to also offer us our opening prayer. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm here today to uh, lead us in our uh, vision, mission, and value statement. So I will speak the line and then please repeat it after me. We are a community. We are a community. That values and supports. That values and supports. Each other in our spiritual awakening. Each other in our spiritual awakening. We are committed to practical spirituality. We are committed to practical spirituality for everyday living. For everyday living. All of our activities. All of our activities are grounded in faith. Are grounded in faith. Nurtured with love. Nurtured with love. And guided by spirit. Guided by spirit. So let's just take this moment to breathe in and out, breathing in the love of spirit and breathing out that love to the world. Recognizing that one eternal loving consciousness expressing itself perfectly as each and every one of us, that one power, that one presence, constantly creating, sustaining, and expanding all life and form. As an individualized, unified expression of this power, embodied in living life, as a man called Peter, a practitioner from this community, with this community. I speak my word right now, knowing that that power expresses as itself through me and reaches every person everywhere, and especially everyone listening to me right now or later on. We create our experience of living, co-create our experience of living with the thoughts we think, the feelings we feel, and the words we speak. Knowing that that is the truth right now, I speak my word for all of you. Knowing that the way is made for you in this time of a new normal, Peace, joy, and love are yours. And I know today that Reverend Suzanne and her message touches you and that you and the service today, having received everything that you tuned in to receive. And so I now release this word into that law, that part of God that only says yes, where it is received, transformed and returned to me and you as our good. And with gratitude for this truth having been expressed through me, I let this be so, and so it is. Thank you, Peter, for that beautiful treatment and prayer. And now is the time we do a short meditation. And this morning, I was inspired in my bookshelf of many books. This wonderful book by Thich Nhat Hanh, 
who's a Vietnamese Buddhist monk. And it's from his book called Living Buddha, Living Christ. And this meditation is based on that today. And he says, the first practice I learned as a novice monk was to breathe in and out consciously, to touch each breath with my mindfulness, identifying the in-breath as in-breath and the out-breath as out-breath. When you practice this way, he said, your, al your alignment comes into being and your wandering thoughts cease and you are at your best. Mindfulness, he said, is the substance of a Buddha. When you enter deeply into this moment, the insight liberates you from confusion. Peace is already there to some extent. The problem is whether we know how to touch it. Conscious breathing is the most basic Buddhist practice for touching peace. So I will offer you this short meditation. Gently close your eyes. Feel comfortable wherever you are. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, I dwell in the present moment. Breathing out, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, I dwell in the present moment. Breathing out, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, calming. Breathing out, smiling. Breathing in, present moment. Breathing out, wonderful moment. Yes, and as we deepen our breath, we can feel that breath coming from the very center of our being, imagining our heart center in the center of our chest, radiating this wonderful present moment. Peace, be still. We radiate that peace to all sentient beings everywhere. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well. May they be peaceful and at ease as we breathe together. Breathing in, calm. Breathing out, smiling. Breathing in, present moment. Breathing out, wonderful moment. And so take a deeper, fuller breath now. And notice how you feel, just from those few moments of mindful, conscious breathing. You've created a shift in your mind, body, and spirit. What a beautiful thing. Mm, thank you for joining me for that. And I invite Peter to come up again and, and lead us in our sacred reading.
Good morning again. Please join me in our sacred meeting for April 19th, 2020. In this moment of now, I turn my attention to the power of love and the ever-present feeling of wholeness. I set a law in motion in my life, which is creative and which contains within itself a limitless possibility. I am loved. I am loved. I am whole. I am grateful. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Peter. And Diana will uh, play a solo song before my talk, so enjoy. so beautiful. Yes, let go of the shore. And it is a mystery. Life is a mystery right now. So welcome again, everyone, Reverend Suzanne Grace Raleigh. Our monthly Centers for Spiritual Living theme this month is Bright Beginnings. And my talk today is titled Unwritten. What's the story? Do you know that tomorrow is unwritten? and that there is an infinite possibility of good awaiting you. We all have our old story, and can we honor it? Can we move from feeling like a victim of circumstance to a victor? Can we bless it all? Have you noticed that our stories have shaped our lives? <laughs> 
We are the product of our story. Our attitudes, our beliefs, our behaviors sometimes can limit us, limit us if they're from the past. Or if we have a different perspective, it can expand our experience of life. And yet we are more than our past, aren't we? We are, as we learn here at the Centers for Spiritual Living in the Science of Mind philosophy, that we are co-creators with life. We are born of infinite potential, that we live in a field of limitless possibilities, and that no matter where you came from, no matter your past history, no matter what you think you inherited, you are more than your story. That's good news. We also know from our faith and our studies that through the use of the law of life, we have the ability, if we choose, to rewrite past chapters, memories, chapter that brings us a more fulfilling life. So I ask you, are you willing to change your story? I have a story for you. There were two fellows, and they were having a conversation. One said, I fell out of an airplane. His friend said, oh, that's bad. Well, I had a parachute. Oh, that's good. Well, the parachute didn't open. Oh, that's bad. Well, there was a haystack underneath. Oh, that's good. Uh, but there was a pitchfork in the haystack. Oh, that's bad. Well, I missed the pitchfork. Oh, that's good. I missed the haystack as well. Uh. Isn't life like that? It's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad. It's all fuel for life. What if we thought of it that way? It's all fuel for life. Can we bless it all? Those of you that are gardeners out there know that to get a bountiful garden, whether it's flowers or vegetables, you have to have manure, compost, to create the most beautiful garden. It's fuel for life, our past. So I invite us to take a moment and, and honor and have gratitude for our past story because it has brought you to this point in time. And I understand not everyone has a happy story. In fact, we, we never know what another person has been going through. So can we open to a compassionate heart for everyone? And how do we come to peace with our own past story? I believe it comes first by recognizing the power of perspective. Is the glass half empty or half full? We're always a choice to change our perspective, to see that story in a new light. So I invite you just to take a moment and close your eyes. Take a breath with me. And simply honor and bless your past. Bless your parents or whoever raised you. Bless them. Bless your family, your extended family, your in-laws, your outlaws. Bless them all. Bless your circumstances then. Take a breath and notice if you need to do any forgiveness work around anything that you have regrets or resentments or any grievances around. Hmm. Because those close our heart to wholeness and love. So take another breath gently and give yourself permission to come back to those places later if you need to and do some prayer work, maybe with a practitioner or a counselor or coach, to heal any old wounds so that you can move forward and be free, untethered, releasing the burden from the past. Yes, give yourself permission. You can open your eyes.
Our founder of Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, says, as we unfold in our mentality, the law automatically reacts to us. The way to work is to begin right where you are, and through constantly applying ourselves to the truth, we gradually increase in wisdom and understanding, for in this way alone will good results be obtained. So let's affirm together. Repeat after me, I honor my past, and I move forward to my future with loving kindness. Yes. As we honor our past and let go of the old ways, we create space, right? To make new decisions and new choices. So let's agree today to make a new choice, to create a magnificent life for ourselves. Are you willing? Yes. Good. I heard everybody say yes. And if you aren't, that's fine. Just pay attention to that. And then we have the current story. How are you doing in this current story? <laughs> wow, it's different. It's uncharted territory. It's interesting. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, addressed another uh, world crisis in a previous century. And he said that there seem to be two attitudes we can assume, calmness and faith, or despair and fear. He urged us to dedicate time, service, hope, and spiritual conviction to the harmonious resolution of that crisis. And he invited us to take the actions that our spiritual practices inspire in us. It's the same thing today. In this century, in this time, in this moment, He also said, for if the whole nation works together and prays together, a great moral and spiritual power, an actual soul force, will penetrate the whole world, helping to bring confidence in calm judgment and right action until the crisis shall have passed. Yeah. Our entire world is going through an enormous disruption. And yet, with it is the opportunity to engage ourselves in our spiritual practices that can produce a soul force to penetrate the whole world. It has to start somewhere. Why not within you? What is happening worldwide, I believe, is bringing into view the stark reality of hopelessness. And yet again, at the same time, the opportunity to move in the direction of innovation through necessity. We're realizing that we can learn, adapt, and change. Or we're not. <laughs> we can share, care, and collaborate more. We can use and consume less, we're realizing. <laughs> We can express our liberty in ways that create a lifestyle based on interconnectedness with each other, with all of life, and with our planetary home. And though we're all sheltered in place, we have to participate in a greater vision for all. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. And this too shall pass. And we breathe. So the next story, are you willing to believe that the possibility of a deeper, richer, or more fulfilling and expressed life may be waiting for you just beyond the horizon of this current story? Remember, we live in an expanding universe that's constantly creating new possibilities. The key is as Thich Nhat Hanh said, is to consciously accept where you are today, bless whatever your life looks like, both the good and the less than the good, and then make a commitment to courageously move forward toward the next step, one step at a time. And I would like to propose that we include others in our new story, that we each become a change agent for good, a catalyst for good. Now, now, 
moving from I to we. I recently completed a uh, class with this book, The Art of Abundance. And in the last chapter, this is by Dennis Merritt Jones, in the last chapter, it is about being a catalyst for good. And I want to share some things with you that I think will be very inspiring of how to take action. And he starts with a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, it really boils down to this, that all life is interrelated. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutualness, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So the author of this book said, when we are conscious of our oneness with the universe and with each other, we are compelled to become change agents for good. This is when our generosity of spirit becomes a catalyst, guiding our actions and making the world a better place. In the web of life, he says, every living being is connected and therefore affected by the actions of others. It can be no other way. What affects the microcosm, the individual, must also affect the macrocosm, humankind, and vice versa. So this awareness shapes our consciousness in a manner that lifts us from me thinking to we thinking. And then he cites an example that Reverend uh, Michael Beckwith said to him one time. When we are conscious of our oneness, we know there is no such thing as personal good. When the tide lifts one boat in the harbor, all boats in the harbor rise as well. When the tide lifts one boat in the harbor, think about that. The tide is not discriminating and saying, oh, your little kayak, yeah, I don't think you're going to go up today. Or, oh, that yacht, yeah, let's raise that yacht up. The tide lifts all the boats in the harbor. Can you personalize that beautiful sentiment? We've been hearing we're all in this together. <laughs> so can we all rise together in, in our intention? So he says to be aware of this truth and embrace it as your truth makes you a catalyst and a change agent for good. So if the ripples you send forth today are guided by loving kindness, non-judgment, reverence, compassion, joy, a spirit of generosity, you may be assured, he said, that you are being a catalyst for good, and that is a I call it. Are you willing? <laughs> and there's some simple ways to do that. First of all, just being mindful. Being mindful of, of what you're thinking. Mind your mind, as we say. And also he has a practice before you walk through the door of, of your home or a business or getting in your car to silently ask yourself, who is it I bring into this situation? Who is it that's coming in? Am I coming from fear or am I coming from love? Am I conscious of my oneness with life as I step into this? Who am I bringing into this situation? Pretty simple practice. But we give that pause and it will change all that we step into. I believe. So Ernest Holmes again says, as we think into this universal mind, we set a law in motion, which is creative and which contains within itself a limitless possibility. Possibility. And I'm going to share a parable with you from this book also. It kind of brings it home. Once upon a time, a student came to his master and said, Teacher, you speak of the importance of selfless service to others as a way of life. You say that if I am to create a rewarding, joyful, and abundant life for myself, I must first learn to serve others. However, I'm uncertain about what that means and how to accomplish it. How do I serve others and still take care of my own needs? 
I would like to understand the difference between selfish, selfishness and selflessness and the consequences of both. In a dream state, the master guided the young student to a large enclosure with two doors. He opened the first door and invited the student to look in. Throughout the room were numer numerous large round banquet tables, and at the center of each table sat an enormous pot of soup. It smelled so wonderful. It made the student very hungry. Sitting around the tables were people who were complaining and crying, and they appeared weak and emaciated, as if they were starving. Each was bound to a chair and holding a long-handled spoon, which fortunately made it to the center of the, the table, reaching the pot of soup to take a spoonful. However, because the handle was far longer than their arms, they could not get the soup back to their mouths before the soup spilled out of the spoon. And so they sat there, starving and complaining. The student was visibly upset at the sight of this anguish. The master then took the student to the second room and opened the door. The room appeared to be precisely the same as the first. The same large round tables filled the room, each with the same pot of soup at the center of the table. The people here were also bound to their chairs and equipped with the same long handled spoons. But one thing was different. Here, the people appeared well fed and they laughed and talked with each other. The student said, I don't understand. Why are these people so filled with joy? It's simple, said the master. You see, in this room, the people have learned to consider the needs of others first and to serve those needs by selflessly feeding one another with their long spoons. In doing so, they are in turn equally well fed. However, in the first room, the people are very self-absorbed, selfishly thinking only of themselves, and they are obsessed with serving their own needs. The idea of serving others never crossed their minds. The answer to the question you asked about the difference between selfishness and selflessness is simple. One is me thinking, and the other is we thinking. And the consequences of both are obvious. Oh, yeah, take a breath. What an amazing story. I was thinking about that the other day. What if we dedicated our life to expressing the attributes of God? The attributes of God being love, peace, compassion, understanding, harmony. What if we dedicated this day, every day, to expressing those attributes? What if we started every day on that footing, dedicated expressing only the attributes of love? Period. End of story. That's it. Wow. Take a stand every morning. Mind your mind. Open to be an expression of that infinite potential. How can I serve today? Remember, each of us is an ever-unfolding expression of an infinite mind. So use it. Let's use it. Let's use it to be of service to ourselves and to others in that loving, compassionate way. And I want to remind us that we have a silent partner in the divine, in God, in our higher power. We have access moment by moment to reconnect with that living spirit within us, to teach us and show us the way. It is not I, but the Father within me that doeth the work. That connection to our sacred center of self, to that presence, will raise us up to a new possibility, a solution a new direction for our next chapter, both individually and collectively. Can you feel that? Yeah. We have to stay connected to our inner guidance system. So let's affirm together, repeat after me, I give myself permission to be a beneficial presence on the planet. 
Let's say it again. I give myself permission to be a beneficial presence on this planet. Yeah, one more time. I give myself permission to be a beneficial presence on this planet. And you don't have to know how to make it happen. You just make it welcome. And the universe will respond. That's guaranteed. You know, we have to practice this. We have to practice rehearsing, in other words, the feeling of success, of love, of joy, of knowing there's a solution, knowing there's a bigger picture here, rather than being stuck in the fear and the despair. That will get us nowhere. So we have to rehearse those elevated emotions. You know, I used to be a professional dancer, and I know a lot about rehearsal. We would never go on stage without rehearsing. I mean, it just would be unheard of if you're a professional singer, anything. You rehearse over and over and over again until everyone would always say to us, oh, it looks so effortless. You're just up there. Yeah, it's effortless. We work really hard to get there. We practice. We have a discipline. So I know all about that practicing of what it can yield. So now I would never think of leaving my home, starting my day even, without prayerful time, without meditation, without connection, without just some opening of my heart. Because I know the power of setting the, the intention at the beginning of the day. And even if you say, oh, I'm not religious, I'm not spiritual, that's okay. You can at least say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this life. I am blessed. That's a powerful prayer in itself. Thank you. My life is blessed. Because that opens your heart. And when your heart is open, your mind opens to a greater possibility. Yeah. And as we know, the latest research in neuroscience does show us that when we begin to think about or visualize or affirm our future, our next chapter, and we embrace those emotions before the event actually happens, that we're actually installing new neurological circuitry in the brain. It's been proven. So that that experience, that event, will be drawn to you. That's the law. It has to be drawn to you if you maintain that vision, that elevated emotion. So I ask you, can you give thanks for this new life before it's even made manifest? Because the longer you feel gratitude now, the more you're drawing that future to you. Because gratitude means it's already happened. What if the solution to this new normal is already here, but we're not letting it in because we're afraid? Hmm. What if we opened our heart, strengthened our faith, and trusted that there is a process happening that's setting all of us free to be better stewards on this planet? Unwritten. What's the next story in your life? How are you going to show up? <sighs> I'm grateful you're here today. And I'm grateful you have spoken those words. So let's take that into prayer. Oh, yes, as I drop into that sacred center of myself, I invite that indwelling, infinite spirit within me, almighty God within me, that which is truth within me, I call it forth. As I recognize the powerful presence of the one, one life, one heart, one mind, one giving essence called God, creator, source, spirit, Beloved, by many names, it is one, one energy, one vibration of love, unconditional love. 
and the attributes of, of God, of the Creator, are wholeness, unity, harmony, joy, peace, abundance, grace. It is the givingness of life itself. And as this presence is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, it is in me as me, it is in each of you as you. I, you, we are all connected, interconnected to the one. Yes. So I claim and know that we are each filled with this morning and into the rest of this week, the peace that passeth understanding, the love of the divine that lifts us out of any fear, doubt, and worry and into an expression of wholeness, of giving and receiving that we feed each other with love, loving kindness. I'm grateful today to stand here in my truth, knowing my truth spreads out. And I hold each of you in that high watch of your willingness to step into a new picture from this day forward of possibilities, of solutions, of love, of healing, of wholeness. Life is good, and all is well. Yes. And I bless each person on the planet. I bless the planet itself for teaching us, for bringing us together. Mm. My heart is open, and I am so grateful to speak these words of truth, so grateful to hold this in my heart for each of us, because there is only one of us. And so we relax, we smile, and I release my word into the infinite mind of God that is always working. I release my word with faith, confidence, and trust in the divine law. Yes, it is good. And we just let it be so. Enjoy me in saying, and so it is. Oh, yes. Diana, bring us in. All right. <laughs> My life flows on in endless soul of ours. No storm can shake my inmost call, or to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It sounds and echoes in my soul. Can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost call, but to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Although the tempest round me roar, I hear the truth it liveth. Soft in the night it giveth, no storm can shake my inmost call, to that rock I'm clinging, since love is a lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing, how can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? That is like the per another perfect message. <laughs> How can we all keep from singing? I mean, we have to sing, right? Mm, yeah. Now is the time of our uh, conscious giving. So if you have a uh, 
giving in your check, or we do have PayPal in which we appreciate. And I think Tony will probably put in the chat there uh, the PayPal link. And you can go to, it's through our um, email, info at fcsliving.org. And that's also our website. And our website, fcslliving.org, has wonderful prayers, written prayers. Um, all of the talks are on there. There's some good information about our center. So I invite you to explore it a little bit while you're at home and have a lot of time. So let's put our gift on our heart and repeat after me. God is my source. God is my substance and my supply. I am blessed. And so it is. And so we bless these gifts. Thank you. All right. I think we're ready to close our service today. I want to thank you again, everyone, for, for showing up in this new virtual realm. And we will be here next Sunday as well, speaking. And reminder that the practitioners and the ministers of our center are on this uh, website or this Facebook every morning at 9 o'clock for 10 or 15 minutes of prayer time with you. So you're welcome to join us at 9 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to finish with a little movement and song. So please stand up if you're able. And there's some simple movements. Uh, heart. You are the heart. You are the hands. You are the voice of spirit on earth. So we're going to move our body a little bit. And who you are and all you do is a blessing, and then you give it out to the world. What a great way to wrap up this message today. So join me. You are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and to you are and all you do is a blessing to the world. We, we are the heart, we are the hands, we are the voice of spirit on earth. And do we all, and all we do is a blessing to the world. I, I am the heart, I am the hands, I am Spirit on earth, and who I am, and all I do is a blessing to the world. You, you are the heart, you are the hands, you are the voice of spirit on earth, and who you are, and all you do is a blessing to the world is a blessing to the world. Ah, yes, you are a blessing to the world. I love you all. Thank you for joining us today. You have a blessed week. Until next time, namaste.